year is 1810. We are in Spain during the Peninsular Wars of the Napoleonic era. Bonaparte has invaded Spain and the British forces have been sent to take it back. With the help of their Spanish partisan allies, they will drive the French out of Spain. And commanding the valiant allied British forces is Chris Peach. Hi. Special guest. Special indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, we have got a very special character from a TV series that we watched when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Sean Bean as Sharp. Oh, he's a blooming bastard, flat man. Look bastard. at him. Bastard. <laughs> it's a TV show that we have huge attraction to. Oh, I have fond nostalgia for it Sharp. It was fun for all the family. It had a mm -hmm. little bit of something for everyone. For mums, you know, it was the Oof. dreamy hearts rob swashbuckling around. <laughs> and for dads, it was uh, people getting shot. We're big fans, so it's nice to do our own little reenactment yeah. of an adventure. We're playing Chosen Men, a skirmish Napoleonic war game aptly named for Sharp's Chosen Men. So in this story, we have the Prince of Wales, heir to the throne of England, so for some reason found himself in Spain <laughs> and wounded behind enemy lines. And only Sharp and his rifles can protect him until reinforcements arrive to evacuate him. In a long line of British monarchs going out and fighting them, fighting in wars, yes. he's got himself in a bit too deep. That's right, he's held up in a farmstead, but the French have caught wind of it and have sent in a column to attack. Boney would be very pleased. It'd be a very big prize mm. to get one of the British royal family in prison. Perfect hostage. So Sharp isn't on his own. I brought with me a handful of 95th rifles, which are the elite of the British Army in the Peninsula. Chosen men. Cho I chose them. I chose them as well. Well, some of them. I didn't choose the shit ones. <laughs> I have with me Harper with his volley gun because we all know Harper from the TV show. Sergeant Harper, big Irishman. Big Irish. Carries a cannon piece <laughs> yeah. off a naval ship because he's a big guy. He is a big guy. We also have Fredrickson, Sweet William as he's known. Tell me uh, about Sweet William. I don't remember him. Sweet William is a captain of the 60th Rifles, which mm. is the red facings these guys have here, and he does work with Sharp for a time. Uh, he has taken a musket ball to the face. This is probably where he takes the musket ball <laughs> to the face. Jeez. Uh, and loses loads of his teeth and spends the rest of his career just carving teeth out of French dead to make his no own new set of teeth. Wow. Well, that's very exactly sweet. the kind of British man you want. <laughs> <laughs> when you called him Sweet William, I was like, oh, what a sweet, charming young boy who's like rising up through the ranks. But no, he's a grizzled trophy taking bastard yep, absolutely. <laughs> and then leading another small cadre of 95th rifles is private peach sculpted to look like me by paul hicks so thank you paul we've probably sculpted most of these models <laughs> it literally anyway. looks like you it is a bit weird to have you in here <laughs> When I was playing this game, I was like, I'm going to attack people. <laughs> Stab me hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I've cunningly placed all my rifles mm -hmm. in and around this farmstead. I've got a couple of the, the outskirts ones here with Harper and Fredrickson, of course, Sharp, mm -hmm. defending the one where the Prince of Wales is currently nursing his broken arm and broken pride, <laughs> mm. <laughs> among other things that are probably broken. So they're, they're going to be defending that, hopefully, just to hold off whatever you bring on the table, Lewis. Yeah, so I've got two squads of 10 Volkagers. These are French skirmishers. They're not mm -hmm. as good as riflemen but they're better than redcoats, that's for goddamn sure. Better than the crappy French line infantry. <laughs> and I've got some crappy French line infantry <laughs> coming of. down this road. <laughs> yeah. uh, led by my, my general, General Jacques Villeneuve de beau papignon <laughs> <laughs> And his long-suffering Egyptian manservant, Mamluk Ali. Wow. He's actually one of yeah. Napoleon's entourage. They fought the Mamluks at the uh, the pyramids, and he was like, I'll keep him alive. Oh, he was like, respected his foe yeah, enough yeah. to like, keep him on. He was there at Waterloo with him as well. Really? Oh. Yeah. Is he a real figure? He is real, yeah, he actually exists. He so plays. I've got real people, and you've got <laughs> fictional people. <Yeah. laughs> Interesting. <laughs> what was your name of your general again? I need to... <laughs> Turn one, French have initiative, let's get cracking. So my big blob of line infantry mm -hmm. with my general walked straight up the road, the general hiding at the back, because I know the 95th rifles are sharpshooters and they can mm -hmm. target officers if you're not careful. <gasps> Those dishonorable cads. But Harper's group did not waste any time opening up. No, no, I'm getting that volley gun out as soon as I can. Spray you down. Oh, come on, chosen men. I chose you for a reason. Oh, only one hit. Oh. So a no. single Frenchman is felled by a musket ball. Oh, he's clutching the blood bag to his chest <laughs> as he goes down. These Ukrainian extras. <laughs> 18 remained. <laughs> skirmishers are a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And so my skirmishers at the back rushed forward, mm -hmm. only to be shot at as well. 
They were, yeah, picked off at long range. Two of the infantry fall and the officer is wounded. Ah! I'm so sorry, Lewis. <laughs> I'm not. So I chose to do the Wilhelm scream there. <laughs> was that what that was? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then my final unit of skirmishers came up through this field and also took fire. Mm. Um, and lost another couple of troops. We lost Frenchmen all over the place. That's going to happen as you advance on prepared positions. We expect. were expecting it. It's the standard of the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way we fight. We march at them until we get shot at. <laughs> <laughs> right, that takes us to the end of turn one. Everyone's moved in advance and the rifles have obviously revealed their positions by opening fire. It's only a matter of time though before the French can overrun them with numbers. Hopefully British reinforcements will arrive soon. Okay, it's the start of turn two, and to Sharp's relief, reinforcements have arrived. So, I brought on my 7th Fusiliers, led by Lord Sebastian Asquith. Asquith? <laughs> his name is debatable in Whitehall. <laughs> Got his two aide-de-camps either side of him, a guy called Bartholomew Beetleburg, the 27th. Right. And we have a Portuguese uh, colonel who's just known as the Portuguese. <laughs> oh. Because they can never remember his name, so... <laughs> They're all, you know, unprepared. They're in March column, so mm -hmm. they're not expecting anyone to be here. Not yet. They're supposed to be rendezvousing with some jumped up Johnny called Richard Sharp. I heard he came up from the ranks. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Riff -raff. Oh my God, they'll promote anyone these days, won't they? Do you remember the good old days? <laughs> when you had to pay for your commissions <laughs> with good clean money. <laughs> yes, or get one from daddy. <laughs> they are done for the turn. That's them marching onto the board. They're not quite ready for action. But it's a lot of fresh troops and it's exactly what Sharp needs. So that, that's the relief force yeah. marching in. Of course, though, my skirmishers saw them and formed up a line mm. on the hill, ready to do enfilading fire oh. into the flank. I was very excited with the idea of enfilading fire. Especially to say it in a French accent. How often do you get to do oui, that? Oui, oui. Yep, French column coming up the road. I mean, Harper's got a volley gun, so he opened fire. The rifles open fire. All oh, lads can potentially be wounded by this one volley. Oh, dear. Uh, three oh lads take it in the bicorn. Yikes, so that's a total of four dead Frenchmen. Three from Harper, one from the other rifle. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. I mean, this is a gun that's so powerful, most men would break their shoulder in firing it. Not Harper, he didn't even break a sweat. So yeah, four Frenchmen mm. fell out of the ranks. The rest marched on stalwartly. If you're at the back of the column, you can't see that people are dying at the front. You're just marching and there's a guy in front of you. You can't see anything. Well, they were just marching over the dead guys. <laughs> well, you know, we've only suffered a few losses, boys. So to keep be expected, going. right? We needed to get a bit closer before we could fix bayonets and charge. So seeing reinforcements had arrived, the harp has got that section sorted. Yeah. Sweet William decided to be a little bit impetuous, take you by surprise, fix mm. bayonets and charge across an open field. <laughs> right, I need some teeth! He did. Towards a wall, which I forgot existed. <laughs> you forgot that walls were quite useful think, defensive yeah, yeah, structures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are the brave tactics employed by the 95th, the sharpshooters. Mm. They um, just charge across open ground. <laughs> I thought it was madness. I was amazed you were doing it. I thought you were just going to have a couple of turns of taking pot shots. It just felt like, oh, that's just too easy. You want to earn a promotion. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I mean, by this point, Sharp's already taken an eagle. What's Sweet William got? Oh, he's Apart overshadowed. Musket hole in his face. That's a shit trophy. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so you charge across open ground, my Volkagers opened up and um, shot a couple of you in the open. Yes, yeah. Only smile. three made it, which was enough to cut down two yeah. Frenchmen. That's right. Neither side ran. It was a bit of a drawn combat there because although you had the impact of the charge and the two kills, the defensive barrier was enough to keep the French morale high and they held yeah. their ground. So neither of us fled. We were stuck in combat for the next turn. Mm -hmm. So at the end, uh, after Sweet William had left, I decided to move the rifles that are led by Peachy over to that farmstead because reinforcements were here. Uh, and we knew that was going to be secure. Leaving Sharp on his own to bodyguard that yeah. prince. That's right, he's just, uh, he's trying to talk the prince down. I bet the prince is saying like, let me at him, I am for glory, for king, I'll charge the French. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> punching him, shut up. <laughs> shut up, you <laughs> bleeding bastard. I'm going to get you out of here alive because the last thing I do. <laughs> It'll Stay be my there! Head. If anything happens to you, it'll be my head on the line. <laughs> What's your name again? Harper! <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Harper, remember that! Yeah, when... Did you have officer markings? <laughs> now it's Harper! <laughs> I swear! <laughs> Peachy squad didn't quite have the speed to make it to the farmhouse and was sort of stuck in open ground. There was a wall, a little wall next to the building, so that's enough to keep me hidden. But Walls not... are your main issue. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> quite get them yet. I felt like this. <laughs> very complicated uh, 
<laughs> I shoot rifles. I shoot three rounds per minute. I don't know about walls. <laughs> Fences, I get. Walls, <laughs> trick me. So on turn three, five, five. three. Ooh. The French have it. I won the initiative, which meant I could do the enveloping fire <laughs> into the flank of the English walking up the road. Uh, Open fire at that column. They are ready to die. <laughs> And I opened fire, it was very successful. I killed many of them. <laughs> Three, English I believe bodies it was. were littering the road. <laughs> and that provoked the English. So your hands were tied here. Mm. Ashquith has the impetuous rule. Every character in here has some kind of trait. Yep. His one was that if he can charge, he must try to charge. Because he's an incompetent fop. <laughs> he is, and he's hungry for glory. Hungry for glory. Classic <laughs> English cavalry officer. <laughs> <laughs> that annoying guy. <laughs> Yep, he's uh, completely forgotten his mission and his orders. Yep. Um, he's seeing red. Yep. Uh, so yeah, he, he organised organised his guys to charge across that fence up the hill and it just went a little bit belly up. Terribly wrong. They stumbled over, they messed around and just got shot some more. This is a typical disastrous oh, English charge, no. isn't it? Yeah, gonna... This is not the time to try and declare a charge. Over broken ground, in uh, the wrong formation. Into enfilading in fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp's in a little bit of trouble now, like his reinforcements are not on their way anymore. He's gonna have to come up with something else. He's gotta protect this idiot, because they're not gonna turn up now, because of this idiot. Why am I surrounded by idiots, <laughs> including myself, obviously, in this equation? <laughs> so with this flank going fantastic, you mm. know, my, I felt like my squad of Volkages, they were, they're really only skirmishing troops, they're not supposed to really lock down an entire column. <laughs> and the command staff, I was like, this is going great. And I was like, do you know what, let's get this big ball in as well, to just charge up the road. So mm -hmm. charged in into Harper's squadron and s surrounded this building here mm. um, with the whole squad. And I kept the general back because again, he likes to supervise. But 14 strong French troops, mm. In they go, coming in through the smoke. They must have like really spooked those boys because Harper and the guy, lads tried to stand and shoot. I've got this. <laughs> <sighs> it's more than enough. And uh, I, I knew at this point that I needed more support because that volley gun is good at range, not in close combat. What's he gonna do with that? Just club you. It's the same as a musket, right? So Peach had to involve himself. So he charged in. Yeah. Um, me. You me. valiantly led I, the counter charge. I turned charge. myself into a miniature <laughs> and I, I, I had to get in there, I had to get stuck in. It's like that movie where you shrink yourself down. <laughs> yeah. Ant-Man. Ant <laughs> oh, so that led us to a big melee where the French are charging over this wall into Harper and Sergeant Peach is running in to like protect Harper's flank. Yeah, Sharp came in as well just to give him some extra motivation. I think yeah. it was more shouting because he was getting so irritated that no one's following the plan. Yeah. Which is mainly yeah. my fault. Two really. of these English squads have, come, have gone charging <laughs> off completely <laughs> independently. And Sharp's like, what the devil is going on? <laughs> this is furious. Madness. So anyway, when the bloodbath had finally stopped, all of Harper's squad was down, apart from Harper. Harper himself was on his last wound and his whole squad was wiped. Yeah. He fled mm -hmm. uh, back to the courtyard. So can we say he heroically backed Sorry. off? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And Peachy squad coming in the side actually managed to take out another three Frenchmen. So mm. it wasn't too bad. The French squad is being depleted, it's being ground down. Right, and that brings us to the other melee. So the gamble for getting Sweet William up there paid off. I held you for a turn, but I wasn't going to survive that. Yes. Now you did take out a Frenchman, I think, mm -hmm. but you lost your other two chums, ran away, and I get a chance to pursue. Mm. Now if I catch you, you're dead. <laughs> uh, Ooh, oh, they're good at running. Oh, oh yes. one inch <laughs> behind. <laughs> Luckily, you ran a little bit too fast. Literally <laughs> one inch farther. One inch. <laughs> um, but it brought my Volker just in towards mm. you. So in fact, you running back to the center of the map was kind of bad. Sort of mm. undid the speed bump that they had already they yeah. caused. Okay, wow. Well, going into turn four, I think Chop's going to need a little bit of help. He is. But luckily, the, the beacons have been lit. That's not what that is. <laughs> it's well, Gondor coming to our feed there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Boromir going to arrive. That's the crossover I didn't know I needed. <laughs> so it's turn four. Things have changed a little bit. The Spanish partisans have made their presence known. Yes. Mm. Unbeknownst to the French, they've been in the area for some time advancing and they've only just revealed themselves hiding in the woods. So obviously Sharp's wife. She's Commandant Teresa, also known as the Needle. The oh, Needle. The, the needle. needle. That's quite a cool, like, mm. you know, wanted. Terrifying. There's posters up on walls saying, 
reward for the needle. She just knits. That's all she does. That's yeah, knits for people's faces off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's come to nice. aid her husband, who clearly is not in distress at the moment, but will be. He soon, soon will be. I don't think he can take on that whole column on his own. I've seen Sean Bean beat off French many times. He's fine. It's frightening. <laughs> but you're not the only person who gets reinforcements. But the British no. is right. The French cavalry turn up. We've got mm -hmm. five dragoons mm -hmm. that have been hunting in a neighbouring field mm -hmm. and on they come. Yeah, they've been waiting for their chance to strike. Very excited because they've heard that there's a prince that needs picking up Uber style <laughs> and they'll take him back to Paris. So they were ready to come on. This is the last of the reinforcements for both sides. So who will tip the balance? The Spanish guerrillas or the French dragoons? So I want initiative. I've got this. Oh, can I beat that number? Oh, 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 it's a draw. Oh. So it goes to whoever didn't have it last time. Oh. Which would mean the British sees initiative today. Oh. Right. And the first thing that made sense was to get the seventh Fusiliers up that hill and sort out your Bombastus. Bombastus? Is that even a word? Uh, it is now. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, French at the top, so we fixed bayonets. Uh, we looked to Sebastian uh, arsewipe, and he was just like, glory, charge! And they didn't know what to do. Come on, chaps, charge for glory! Oh no, oh, again, again! again. They stumbled forward another five inches up the hill. <laughs> and they fluffed it again. It was so bad, <laughs> the fluffing of this. You know, you've got your line infantry are this, pretty much the same as mine. Mine were doing fantastic. <laughs> they were wiping out squads. Your guys are struggling up a hill. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're tired, all right? <laughs> 14 hours. <laughs> so in response, my Volkages were just fully taken advantage. They were like, down the hill, men. You know, they had another volley and then they charged into that volley. Mm -hmm. English were being speared left, right and center. Mm -hmm. Three of the Volkages died, but they had such momentum, such power that it actually yeah. broke your squad, yep. and you were fleeing. The Brits outnumbered the French there three to one, but I guess they saw their officer dithering and screaming men coming out of the smoke. They don't know how many of them there are coming down this hill. Yep, it's the incompetence of officers. I mean, you've heard of the Coldstream Guards, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard of the Scots Guards? Oh yeah. You heard of the Seventh Fusiliers? No, <laughs> no one else. <laughs> <laughs> the Derbyshire Fusiliers, doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> this is what well, this is why. <laughs> So yeah, they didn't even run fast enough to escape because I rolled high enough to pursue and I knocked, I knocked them out to a yeah, man. Yeah, not only did you stab them in the back and watch the survivors flee off the board, you captured their colours. I did, which was I don't, I don't, a real <laughs> crowning moment for the young lieutenant of the Volkages, who was clutching his injury. <laughs> he was, he'd been oh. slapped by a chosen man. And yet he's sa sabering Englishmen left, right and centre. The officer's like, wait, I don't know what's going on. Oh, he's grabbed the flag off a dying man. He's waving it on top of the hill. It was the it was the most French moment ever. And, and how does Lord Sebastian the III respond? Does he try to rally his fleeing men? Does he try to stay with them and protect the colours? Oh no, he's a coward. <laughs> right. He's an absolute coward. <laughs> okay, so he's just literally abandoning yeah. as fast as yeah. he can. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So he meant he and his two assistants managed to escape. Yes. Uh, so the sensible thing would be to do something with my rifles, but Sharp has witnessed this horror, this crime, this affront to everything he believes in. He's now going to take a shot at Asquith no. and remove him from the field. Because he's killed officers in blue coats, he's killed officers in red coats, he's now going to kill an officer in a blue coat. So I'm going to shoot him. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you going to allow this, Ben? And you just sort of let it happen. I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, it's, it's, it would happen if there's someone literally, if Sharp saw one of his own officers throwing the battle away. An incompetent idiot. Yeah, yeah who is so politically important that he would avoid any blame. I can see Sharp doing that. In the midst of battle, mm -hmm. he fights dirty. Oh, so I was, yeah, I was so impressed by not only the ruthlessness of, of your decision and Sharp's, but also the incredible accuracy that he managed to show. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? Fine, you've killed your own commander. Let's have his aide take command. Yep. Turns out he's actually a little bit more competent. Yes, Bartholomew beat a bug the 27th. <laughs> Uh, panned out to be quite a good uh, sort of, I guess, battle secondary promotion. Yeah, yeah, battlefield yeah. promotion. Well, I like to right. think, you know, um, High Command assigned a semi-competent officer to this Lord to stop him making any real grievous errors. Well, he didn't though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't really. Help. He failed at that. So, uh, you know, he's got something to prove now. A lot to prove. So in the middle of the field, 
-hmm. My cavalry moved straight up into the battlefield, ready to respond wherever. Mm -hmm. And my voltagers, chasing Sweet William, who'd run away mm -hmm. to join up with Sharp, came around the corner and opened fire on yeah. both of them. Had them dead to rights in the open, but completely <laughs> fluffed it. <laughs> oh! Hot oh! armor! Full oh! armor! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Deflected. What has happened here? Honestly, so so ridiculous. <laughs> this happens. Every, it's like it's like it's rigged. What happened was Harper yeah. opened up with his volley gun. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Two of them fell, leaving only three remaining, and they were like, "Enough of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're out." They ran away, and in fact, they ran away again the next turn, and they were never seen again. <laughs> They're like, we've had enough. <laughs> it's the guys from the TV show. <laughs> we've, we're doomed. <laughs> the plot armor is it's ridiculous. <laughs> it did feel like the show, though, didn't it? Like these guys run around the corner, just about to ambush Sharp, and then there's Harper there waiting for them as they walk around the corner and just blasts them it does. Off, the, off the screen. And they flee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very French of them. So at this point, it was needed for Teresa and the partisans to be a buffer and just get themselves between the voltages over there and, of course, the cavalry that were steaming across the battlefield. Mm. Giving mm. me the threat. Fear. Yeah, they're your last line of defense now. Yeah, I've not got many left. So. Spanish guerrillas have to step in and save the day again. And then meanwhile, the, the big French column keeps pushing forward. Grinding down this road. Yeah. yeah. It was a bit of a meat grinder. In the melee, two dead on each side. It's pretty even combat, but the French can just absorb these losses. So the riflemen can't. And There's hardly many left. Though. Chosen men. Chosen men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, losing a chosen man is worse than losing a... Um, a random French, French conscript. <laughs> so the line infantry cut through Peachy's unit, mm -hmm. leaving only Peachy and two of them left. They are holding the road, but barely, mm -hmm. and we're grinding them down. Right, it is now turn five. Amazing. And it's all to play for. Let's have a little recap here. So uh, the French column continues to advance. Just the last little stragglers of heroic riflemen are in their way. The dragoons are ready to charge in. And maybe the partisans can intercept them? At this point, I have a special rule. Mm -hmm. Intelligence officer, that's what Commandante Teresa has. Okay. She could steal initiative. Come on, Teresa, don't let me down. Yes! Oh, Come on, okay. Teresa! So I stole initiative, and I use this moment because all oh, hell's breaking loose. Got two guys on horseback. Got a load of guys on horseback to deal with. So it made sense to be, get them in there, be a buffer, hold that cavalry off, yeah. your dragoons. It's a noble sacrifice. It's a combat they are very unlikely to win, but they can sell their lives for another turn. It's the only way to scrub the disgrace of what just previously happened. And it went badly. <laughs> Bloom. Ooh. Oh, they hit with everything. Oh, they both died <laughs> and only one of my cavalry was killed. <laughs> yeah. What a noble sacrifice. So in response, mm -hmm. my column of French line troops charged in to all the special characters. Mm -hmm. Sharp was off to one side, so I said my general mm. was going to duel him in one-on-one -on -one combat. Oh, very honorable, sir. Because my general is a master, <laughs> a melee expert, and comes, he loves a duel. Comes from the finest school of French fencing. And of course, as we know, Sharp is not from the officer class. <laughs> <laughs> and so an inferior fighter. <laughs> What chance does a peasant have against fine French fencing? However, it turns out that, as we know, Sharp, risen from the ranks, knows yep. how to fight dirty. Very dirty. So the combat was quite brutal, yep. quite bloody. See, that's, oh! that's, 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 that's the group. You've, been, you've been saving these rolls <laughs> all game. And that, that, that's just pulling your hair a little bit as well. Oh, what if does not fight like a gentleman? <laughs> Come here, you bastard! Kick me into the <laughs> <laughs> My French queens! <laughs> and it ended up with Le General bleeding oh. on the ground. Sharp was wounded. He's only got one wound left after this duel. He did get stabbed. Yes, but Le General was, <laughs> was more dead. Importantly, <laughs> more importantly, Mamluk Ali dragged him to safety yeah. briefly and cried and they had this heartfelt moment where it was like, oh, tell my family about my sacrifice. It was a very sad romantic moment. <laughs> so uh, more French bodies are piling up by the sides of this road, mm -hmm. but we are grinding our way down it. And we pushed Peachy back as the last member of that squad. Yeah. And that was in fact leaving only your heroes. Yeah. It's, this, this is the important part of the, the story, isn't it? It's like, this is, this is the threat. This, this is like this, they, is, this is what he loves. Oh, this is where Sharp really shows what he's made of, right? It does. When the odds are against him, when it looks like the French are overwhelming, <laughs> Sharp comes alive. 
I mean, at this point, seeing Sharp take down your general is super inspiring. There's not much that can go wrong. I've seen this TV show before. I know what's going to happen now. Nothing but fanfares, some weird electric guitar probably going off in the background somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So it's all going well. I <laughs> may be kissing Teresa at the end as well <laughs> of a sunset. It's, it's fine. I've got it in the bag. Sure. So your guys held another turn mm -hmm. against this indefatigable line. There was <laughs> so many French boys still left. Yeah. Even though taking you out two or three a turn, it's not enough to make them flee. Mm. They're winning these combats. And so that momentum has kept You're us going. Keeping momentum up. Momentum on the French side has been so strong for this whole game. So at this point, there's a big hole in my center. There is no one protecting the prince. So Teresa could do the only thing that's necessary, which is to secure that compound and stop that cavalry. Yeah, so your partisan has moved to the center. My Volker just moved up to that fence there and um, setting up themselves for a potentially long charge mm. in the next turn. Okay, top of turn six. I feel like this could be the decider. All to play for right now. Just the ragtag partisans defending the heir to the throne. <laughs> French dragoons are in position to charge. The light infantry could even pull off a long charge if they're lucky. Mm. And the line troops down to eight men. I knew that I had to secure this courtyard and I couldn't wait around. If mm. I messed around, my cavalry would get bogged up by the partisans or some weird stuff was going on. So I needed to roll to win initiative and I did. Five. Ooh. And the Dragoons charged in straight away into yeah. the Partisans. Partisans do get to hold their ground and shoot you as you advance. Picked one off. Did lose a horse on the way in, but three cavalry, still pretty, pretty powerful with the sabres coming down through the smoke. They do hit hard. Felt good. So seeing this, I mean, Harper's not going to sit there and watch Teresa take this on her own. He's going to get in there with his volley gun. So he charges in against those cavalry as well. Extra muscle, Irish oh, muscle. Giving it a bit of the Irish one too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Seeing that though, the Volkage's <laughs> officer carrying the English um, colours. Oh, he's flushed with victory. Had such momentum. He charged across as well and joined mm -hmm. in on the battle. And when the smoke cleared, five partisans, in fact, all the partisans had died. All that was left was Teresa and her friend, my top favorite hat. top hat man, <laughs> and Harper. <laughs> However, between them, they did manage to kill two more of the dragoons, Dead. leaving me with only one dragoon remaining mm. and a good that, squad of Volkages. That was such a slaughter that Teresa was forced to withdraw. She was, and top hat guy went with her, obviously. And her valiant hiding bodyguard. Be, valiant bodyguard hiding behind the wall. It was a a feint, I'd like ah, to call it. Of course. It's all part of the plan. Yes. L lure you into that little meat trap that we had, which was the Prince of Wales. <laughs> Harper, however, didn't withdraw. No, he's Irish. He's not going to listen to... He's holding his ground. Yeah. Especially seeing Sharp and the others fighting on the road. He's not going to leave his lad yeah. chosen men behind, is he? It didn't go so well for the rest of the chosen men, though. The French line infantry bayoneted Sweet William. Oh, took out the other half of his face. They disemboweled <laughs> Peachy. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, this is one of those it. episodes where... All of the side characters get knocked off. <laughs> is it because they're follically challenged? That's why, isn't it? Oh no. The two bald men in the road. Yeah. They also drove Sharp back. And Sharp was forced to retreat into the compound as well. Mm. And it was a scary moment because suddenly the French were really overwhelming the centre. Yeah. Well, and, and as you pursue the French guerrillas, your light infantry were able to capture the objective. That's right. We did grab hold of uh, the Bonnie Prince mm -hmm. and um, took him into our control. The absolute men of the match. <laughs> they have done so well. They captured the banner and the, <laughs> and prince. the prince. And the never banner. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to take over from Napoleon. <laughs> At this point, A I'm starting to think excitement. this what? isn't Sharp's episode anymore. No. This, this junior light infantry French lieutenant He's seen off a whole battalion. He's charged, done heroic charges across open ground. He's captured a standard. He's now just destroyed the Spanish resistance and captured the crown prince. I know. If anyone's the hero of this story, it's... Chapé. Chapé. <laughs> Le Chapé. <laughs> down, 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 down. I'm rooting for this guy now. What a we, hero. We all were. I think we all were, including me. Yeah. And I own Sharp. <laughs> there was a time in the middle of the game when I was like, damn, I'm killing you. And then after a while, I was like, damn, I'm killing you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The first thing this guy did was get wounded. And then everything since then has been glory after glory after glory. I fell in love with the French in this game. <laughs> I, was, I was really proud of my boys. They did such a good job. So yeah, we were at this moment. And of course, mm. it's not over until it's over. It's not over there yet. There are still heroes alive and they can do heroic things. Mm -hmm which gave us mm. one more turn. So we've got one last turn to see how this all pairs out. It's literally just Sharp, Harper, Teresa, and Top Hat Man. Top Hat Man. 
<laughs> we still haven't given anything. <laughs> <laughs> Even at this late stage. I think Top Hat Man's perfect. <laughs> And seven. I didn't think it would come down to this, but our brave heroes are in a last stand situation. And so Sharp seizes the initiative. He knows he's got to act now to stop the French. What's he going to do? Harper is stuck in combat. He needs to get out there. He needs to make use of his volley gun. It's not mm. doing anything. It's, it's loaded. So it felt right to get him out of there and then just empty it onto the French column. Um, it actually took out two Frenchmen. Mm. Because there was only eight left, that made him take a morale check. Mm -hmm. Now their officer's dead as well. So they've got... Um, General! <laughs> they need to roll pretty well. Shit. <gasps> Which they failed. So they started going back down the road. Yeah, as slowly as they advanced. Stop it. <laughs> Looking at all the dead bodies on the way and being like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Which suddenly turned the battle. Because it was like, oh, I've got one horse. I've got one damaged squad of Volkages. And you've got some special characters. Hmm, it's pretty close. <sighs> so I decided Le Charpe would do what all good French infantry officers do, especially young lieutenants who want a promotion, <laughs> they would engage in a duel. Mm. I challenge you <laughs> to a noble duel! Because he didn't see the other duel happening. Oh, that's true. He doesn't know that he's a dirty fighter. He has no idea. <laughs> All the French were watching the duel. Meanwhile, oh. Teresa's is going behind them, slitting their throat, <laughs> stabbing them in the back while they're not looking, <laughs> mopping up that French light infantry. So that's what happened. The, the Volkages, they all got torn apart by Top Hat Man and Teresa. Top Hat Man took one. Oh, yeah. I, I like to think maybe one of them loaded them, their musket at Teresa and Top Hat Man dives in front. He pushes her out of the way and takes the bullet. Yeah. Like in his top hat. In his uh, top hat, which unfortunately is also where his brain is. <laughs> <laughs> so the Volkages failed their courage check yep. when they realised they were all being killed by Teresa and they fled out into the road. They'd had enough by this point. Teresa we followed them yep. mm -hmm. and scattered them to the winds. Go, Teresa. I knew she'd do. She's she got a fearsome reputation. You know? Yeah, she's the needle. They don't want to get sewn. She's so, she, was, she was sewing them together. She was making a nice quilt out of these guys. Jeez. So from a position of me having 16 of the best Frenchmen <laughs> that had survived this battle, I now had none of them. <laughs> you had two left. I had one cavalryman <laughs> and the Chape, who was engaged in a duel with Sharp. They are both wounded. Old um, Le Chapey. Yes, he took an injury he, right at the start of the battle. One chosen man winged him. He's been done all of these heroics while bleeding the whole time. He's like Le Chapey. <laughs> <laughs> Le Chapey. <laughs> you know, Le Chapey, he's he'd be a hero, but he's actually not got the best stats or rules. He's just a really nothing character. But actual badass heroic hero Sharp is wounded and has spent all of his extra cool boy points. He's tired. He's, oh, he's, he's real knackered. tired. He's doing his heavy breathing that Sean Bean always does at this point. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> he's, he's got, he's got blood-stained red tomato sauce all on his shirt. <laughs> Far too bright blood and uh, he's breathing heavily. So, I just needed to roll some good dice. Yeah, a couple of high dice. Oh, believe. <gasps> it's a hit! Oh, I don't even look at it. Don't it's a it. three or more. I'm gonna... Which I did. Yeah! <laughs> Sharp is down! Oh, he returns to die! <laughs> yeah, Sharp is down. I like to think he was... This is such an honourable officer that when Sharp went down and he had the sword to his throat, he chose to capture him yeah. as a worthy yeah. foe. You yield! You yield! Yeah. I don't know what that means, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> you bleeding bastard. Bastard. Yeah, so we took Sharp captive. Meanwhile, the cavalryman, seeing Harper's volley gun, being yeah. distracted by the volley gun, clubbed him unconscious as well. The last dragoon mops up Harper. So we're, we're circling in the courtyard. A dragoon, Le Charpe, and Teresa's like peeking over the wall. Like, <laughs> Can I take both of these guys on on my own? Well, and this, like, at this point, the game should be over. This is the end of the game. Mm. But we can't just leave it with Teresa and two Frenchmen. We have to see this through. Yes, we needed a conclusion. So yeah. we go into extra time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it felt right to charge, didn't it? I mean, she's she's at this point already like taking down an entire unit of French on her own. Mm -hmm. There's an officer and just a cavalry guy. I mean, mm. what are they going to do? So she gets a little needle out. Mm -hmm. She sees her husband in can't, the floor. Can't abandon him. So she charged in. It's heroic. Heroically. I love it. What I wanted was for her to take out the Frenchman, pick up Sharp, pick up Harper, <laughs> get the prince, take take the horse off take the Take the horses off the dragoons. And get away. Oh, oh yeah, she misses! She misses. <laughs> but she didn't she didn't manage to do it. She didn't roll yeah. the dice. Before she could finish the job, the dragoon comes in behind and cracks her on the back of the head too. Yeah, that one cavalryman 
on the top of his horse was not taking any shit. Cavalry <laughs> officer, he's seen this before. He's, I'd also say he's the most unlethal cavalry officer I've ever seen. He only like knocks people out. Yeah. <laughs> he's never actually killed anyone. That's right. He gets quite a lot of kicking people in the face from his saddle. That's, you know? that's what happened, yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like any heroes, they don't just get killed like that. They get they get put in a net mm -hmm. and taken back to somewhere that they can escape from later. Exactly. That's the way it, it's the way it has to it has to be. So um, there we go. The hero of the story was Le Chapé, Le Chapé. after <laughs> all. A French victory. A great victory for Napoleon that may change the tide of the war. But the Peninsula War was only a mere blip in the Napoleonic campaign. Yeah. And there's um, plenty of Spanish guerrillas who may be able to ambush a prisoner transfer. Yeah. Continue Sharp's adventures. Oh, imagine that. There are many more Frenchmen willing to die. <laughs> there are many more Spaniards willing to rise up. It is a wonderful time. And uh, thank you for joining us for this incredible game. Thank you, mm. Peachy, mm. for painting all these beautiful yeah, models. Yeah, these look fantastic. You've done amazing work. I, I had a lot of fun doing it, so thank you. Um, it's been good if people want to learn how to paint Napoleonic models like these models, mm -hmm. they can go to your YouTube channel. They can. Our YouTube channel, which is The Painting Phase. Uh, to celebrate doing this, we have decided to do a little sharp painting video. So teaching how to paint some red coats, some green coats, and some blue coats. Mm. And white coats, obviously, because they're the men of the match. <laughs> well, there you go. That was amazing. And a very special thank you to the person for whom this would all not be possible, me. <laughs> no, I meant the members. <laughs> if you want to become a member and support this channel and get more of these videos made, and also get special access to an extended version of this video, where you'll get to see all of the rules and the dice and all the extra decisions that didn't quite make it into the final cut, please consider supporting us by clicking the button below. So yes, thank you members, and thank you other people who are watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.